Now let's see how we can convert the given decimal into the rational form that is p by q form. We have already discussed about rational numbers as the numbers which can be expressed in the form of p by q where p and q are integers and q is not equal to zero. The definition has already been discussed in the previous session. So today we'll see how we can convert the any any sort of decimal into the rational form the p by q form. So let's start with an example problem. So converting decimals to rational form. So let's take an example problem and see how a decimal number can be converted to its respective rational form, a rational number. For example, if I have 0 0.125 as the number, then this is clearly in the decimal place, is a decimal number with three values after the decimal. So 0 0.125 can be expressed in rational form by simply taking this with 125, whatever is there after the decimal, I just write down. And then because I have the decimal here, when I want to move the decimal three units to the right, I divide by 1000 as we already discussed in the lower classes moving of the decimal to the right makes me divide with 10 each time you jump from 1 2 and 3 so three steps out here 1 2 and 3 therefore I get 10 power 3 if I need to move five steps to the right then I write this as 10 power 5 so moving to the right would divide with 10 power n and moving to the left would be multiplied with 10 power n and therefore here I get this as 125 by 1000 which is a rational number because p by q form with p and q as integers and q is not equal to 0 q being 1000 out here. So this is how I convert the given decimal into rational form. But how do I give the most simplified answer for this? I wanted the most simplified answer for 125 divided by 1000. So in this case when I want to further simplify, I clearly understand that I can divide this with 5. When I get this as 5 twos are 10, 5 fives, 5 two hundreds, 5 fives, 5 fourths, 5 ones, 5 eight. Therefore, the most simplified answer for this is 1 over 8. So the rational number corresponding to the decimal 0 0.125 is said to be either 125 by 1000 or when simplified further, the most simplified answer being 1 over 8 is the answer for the given concept. So this is identified to be the rational number. So let's take another example which supports conversion from decimal to the rational number. Now this is the number which I wanted to convert to the rational form. So in this case, I just understand that I need to move my decimal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's a 5 step process to move this decimal to the right to make P as an integer. So therefore, when I have this 1, then because I move 5 steps to the right, I simply raise 10 to the power 5. And then I get this to be 1 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is 1 lakh. 1 over 1 lakh is the rational value for the given decimal 0 0.00001. Yes. Now we have discussed about converting the decimal to the rational form. Also we have to dis decide on what we conclude from seeing different answers. So definitely I would like to take one more example to make a conclusion on the relation between the numerator and denominator of the rational numbers when converted from decimals onto their respective rational form. So when I take 53.25 and then if I take 53.24 and I convert this into the rational form then because the decimal has to move two steps to the right I understand this as 5324 by 10 square which is 100 and this on further simplification gives me 250s 2 to the 4, 13, 2, 6, 
to 6, 2 to 25. So 1331 by 25 is the most simplified answer for the given decimal. So as I see in each of the cases, there should be some conclusion which I need to make between the relation between the numerator and the denominator. So using the different examples, I make the following conclusion which acts as a theorem. So if any decimal value which terminates because in every case I have taken those values and decimal values which terminate they have some ending out there. So the limited decimal value if any decimal value terminates then its rational form then it can be expressed it can be expressed in rational form p by q and not only that and also its prime rational form and also its most simplified answer will be and its p and q will be co-primes. Now co-primes are those values which are considered to be when the GCD of those two numbers is 1. So when do I say that two numbers are co-prime? If I say that two values are co-prime then, then the GCD or HCF of those two numbers must be 1 then that implies the two numbers are co-prime. So this is the testing for the co-primes. So when I want to test for two numbers to be co-primes, I just find the HCF of those two numbers and if I get the HCF to be 1, the HCF which is already discussed in the previous session, if the HCF of two numbers is 1, then the two numbers are said to be co-primes to each other. So my statement here says that if any decimal value terminates with limited decimal values, then it can be rational, it can be expressed in rational form p by q and also its p and q will be co-primes. And further q can be expressed in the form 2 power n 5 power m where n and m are non-negative integers. So this is how I conclude the theorem but the whole of this concept is what we need to understand and very important. So why did I say that q can be expressed in the form 2 power n and 5 power m? What is the need? Because whenever I wanted to convert the decimal value into the rational form, I have taken divided by 10 power, 10 power, 10 power, which is 100 as 10 square. So whenever a decimal value is converted into the rational form, the concept here comes that if the decimal terminates, then I divide with 10 power the number of steps where the decimal has to jump to the right. So this 10 power clearly makes me understand that since 10 has the prime factors 2 and 5, therefore each of 10 power n will have its decimal 2 power if I have 10 power k then this 10 power k can be written as 2 power n into 3 power into 5 power m. So 2 power n into 5 power m is how I can express 10 power k. So as can be clearly seen in case of 10 being with factors 2 and 5. So that's the reason I get here q always being in the form 2 power n and 5 power m, the product of factors. As I can see here, 1 by 8 can be written as 1 by 2 power 3. So here n is 3, m is 0 in case of this. This can be written as 1, 3, 3, 1 by 25. I can write it as 5 square, which is 5 power m. m is 2 and n is 0 because there's no 2 term, 2 power term. 
So everywhere I see the same concept. Similarly, this can be written as 1 by 10 power 5, that is 2 power 5 into 5 power 5. And then m is 5 and n is 5. So every terminating decimal value which is expressed in its most simplified answer in rational form will have its denominator in the form 2 power n into 5 power m where n and m are non-negative integers is how I conclude the theorem. This is the theorem which supports the, the examples considered here.